Or in which country do you think we might see the first female manager? Well, that's easy to answer because it's happened in France. In the Premier Leagues, which which league? Yeah, will it, it would, will be France then, most likely, presumably? It could be anywhere. I mean, clubs are missing an enormous opportunity. I mean, in soccer, obviously, say the manager is not actually that important. You know, the manager doesn't really determine results in the way that people fantasise about. Typically, I mean, a very good manager like Guardiola or Klopp adds some value, definitely. But if you think the manager is at all important, well, you want to get the best manager. But if you're, let's say, uh, Tranmere or Norwich, you can't get the best manager because the best manager will go to Manchester City or someone. If you want to get a female manager, you can get the best female manager pretty much in the world because you will pay more than she could earn in any other job because of this ridiculous and illegal discrimination against women. In the last... Uh, day or so, Harlan's agent at Manchester City has come out and said that they believe he may well be the first billion pound player. What was your take when you heard that? People in football use billion to mean lots of money. They don't actually have any sense of what it means. Billion, literally, as you know, means a thousand million. But I remember when Manchester United and New York Yankees 20 years ago agreed a kind of we're going to advise each other on marketing in each of our own consonants. The Sun ran a headline saying tie-up could be worth a billion pounds. Now, what that means is it could be worth a lot of money, which it wasn't. And so I think that's what Harlan means. Harlan's agent means. So do you, yeah, because there's so many different ways that you can cut the value of a a player in terms of not just transfer fee, but also contracts and now merchandising and marketing on top of that as well. Yeah. And, you know, does the player have a role in his own merchandising? Um, is he out of contract? I mean, what expedited Haaland's transfer to Manchester City was the death of his agent, Mino Riola, because Riola had been looking for, I think, tens of millions of euros as a personal fee. And when he died in April, almost immediately, City agreed the deal with Dortmund, because suddenly there wasn't a guy in the middle trying to get an extra 30 million or so. It was just a matter of paying Dortmund, and the two clubs could quickly agree got a World Cup coming up. There'll be players that have particularly good tournaments over five or six games, and then their value can often shoot up. I mean, you're making a big mistake if you buy a player based on a World Cup. You really shouldn't be buying a guy who's playing for a mid-level club and is, let's say, 26, so you have a long, long record of his career. But in six games at the World Cup, he did really well. That's not a good indicator. You want to watch the guy over hundreds of matches. Football industry has got progressively a bit less stupid from a base of very high stupidity and so they don't really make these transfers anymore and very largely clubs are looking to get players who are just very good and they're not so swayed by oh we're going to use him in marketing or advertising that player wouldn't last a training session in the eyes of his teammates what is the player doing when he doesn't have the ball so where is he on the field and what difference is he making in those positions? Because the player has the ball typically for one minute a match. So for the other 89 minutes, he's making decisions about positioning. So as we get better at understanding what the player is doing in those 89 minutes, we'll become better at valuing players. Yeah, Messi, I mean, he's unusual in that he's been exempted from defensive work. Almost no other footballer today is. So he spends 89 minutes walking and looking and building a mental map in his head of where everyone is. And so when he gets the ball, he activates that map and he knows knows that's where the space is you're going to come through there then it's going to come back into the middle and their center back is going to be five meters away in the wrong position you know this is becoming a cliche now but scanning is what the best players do more than the average players so there's a great video of frank lampard and chesk fabregas scanning like multiple times a minute Messi or ronaldo data analysts and statisticians uh say look they're both the best forwards of their era but messi is also the best playmaker of his era so there messi is two brilliant players in one whereas ronaldo is only one brilliant player in one but i mean i think the real question is we've never had before except maybe alfredo di stefano a player who for 15 years week in week out played at the highest level brilliantly. You know, Pelé didn't do that. Pelé played a lot of exhibition matches, pointless exhibition matches. Maradona, Napoli was certainly not an every week guy. I think that what changed in this era is the best players got a lot more protection from referees. So Pelé was kicked, Maradona was kicked, Messi and Ronaldo hardly. You're not allowed to kick anymore, really. Mm -hmm. For the first time ever, really, in football, we've taken brilliant players and said, we're going to protect you. And we're going to make sure that you're going to be brilliant as long as possible, because that's what television 
required. Most of us would say a nurse is worth more than a footballer. I'm not sure that that's true in the case of Messi, say. I think Messi and a few players give people so much joy. Nobody else could do that. So morally, a nurse should probably earn more than a footballer. In markets, and markets, of course, are not moral, is that you're paid according to the monetary value of your talent. The teams with the best players win, the teams with the worst players lose. That's pretty much how it works. So Manchester City win because De Bruyne and Haaland and so on are very good players. And so why are De Bruyne and Haaland at City? Because City pays them the most. I think that... It separates and alienates them very often from their friends and family they grew up with. It makes them very suspicious of people they meet because a lot of people they meet are gold diggers. And they can't go out onto the streets because there's just people photographing them or they're in a restaurant with their girlfriend and there's somebody recording the conversation and putting it on social media. And so what does a footballer do? Often he ends up staying in his mansion playing video games. So they become prisoners of their fame. 